Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Marley, and in today's video, we're going to be reading one of the essays that got us into UCLA. Okay. My name is Jasmine. I got into UCLA as an applied math major, and then I switched to stats. My name's Sam, and I'm a mechanical engineering major. My name's Nami, and I easily got into UCLA. <laughs> <laughs> As, as a biology major. My name is Amaya and I got in into applied math and I switched. Just to barely to got in. <laughs> My name is Alex and I got into UCLA as a materials engineering major. <laughs> Loki, I was th just thinking about how much like work I have to do. I'm not going to read this. Alex is quitting the video. <laughs> <laughs> you could quit if you need. Nope. No laughing. What would you say your greatest talent or skill? The recorder. Oh. Yeah. Alex is an expert recorder. I, Alex Alex is the recorder and he's yeah, really yeah. good That's at it. That's actually what I wrote my essay about. Really? Planning, yeah. oh. Planning dates. <laughs> All of you developed and demonstrated that talent over time. I consider my greatest skill to be helping people deal with technology issues. My... Bro. For real? <laughs> You're not an idiot. You're not allowed to laugh. His greatest talent is being <laughs> IT. <laughs> My interest in technology began when I was about four and got my first computer. It was an early computer from the 90s, simple and new, much like I was. I used it to make drawings with Microsoft Paint and play a game about the children's show Blue's Clues. Over the years, I used and received various electronic devices, such as school computers and an iPod Touch, and I got familiar with them. When I was in sixth grade, my teachers started using new projectors. Some of the teachers were not sure how to set up their computer screens, and they would ask if anyone knew about technology and could help them. I was happy to volunteer and enjoyed helping them learn about the new equipment. At the end of the year, I ran for a technology commissioner on student council and served in that role the next year. In eighth grade, I liked offering to update the operating systems on my friends' phones. That year, I also began watching YouTube videos about tech whenever I had free time, such as on the bus, in the car, and after I finished homework. I learned a lot about gadgets, computer software, and hardware, and the tech community from watching videos and continued to learn that way today. In 10th grade, the videos inspired me to build my own desktop PC. I watched many tutorials about building computers and, and which parts tend to build the best low-budget computer. After I had built my PC, my dad asked me if I could help him build a new computer for his work and we built one together. Since I grew up with technology, figuring out new technology has always come naturally to me. Helping others with technology brings me joy because it allows me to share my interests with others while benefiting them. I want to major in engineering to expand my knowledge of technology and give back to the tech community. Yeah. Nice! I can leave. Peace! Where are you deleting? Whoa! What would you say is your greatest talent or skill? How have you developed and demonstrated that talent over time? For as long as I can remember, I have been driven by skepticism. At the age of six, I launched a thorough investigation into the existence of Santa Claus. While this investigation left me heartbroken, it raised further questions and I needed more answers. My investigative abilities were again put to the test when, in fourth grade, I noticed a lollipop missing from my stash on Halloween and I sensed foul play. <laughs> Had it been orange, I might have looked the other way. <laughs> this is so cute. Yeah, you have like cherry, I spared no effort. Yes! This is so cherry. good! After factoring in the time of disappearance and relative location of my classmates, I narrowed in on a suspect and noticed his tongue stained red with the blood of my cherry lollipop. <laughs> his confession followed. As I grew up, this investigative nature sparked a passion for crime solving. I transitioned from crime shows to documentaries on criminal investigation. I learned to conduct statistical analyses and read body language. I poured over suspect interviews, taking note of compressed lips, tapping feet for darting eyes. Nonverbal cues became my second language. My friends sarcastically titled me Sherlock Holmes for my peculiar passion, however, they have been quick to ask for assistance with cases of their own. My friend employed me when her wallet was stolen at a party, and I had it back by the end of the night. From trivial matters of stolen lollipops, I began to investigate real crimes. I ordered the Unsolved Case Files, a game that provides cases with just enough evidence for a skilled detective to solve them. I apply my mathematical abilities to detest statistical irregularities, I employ my programming skills to perform digital simulations, and make use of my psychoanalytic understanding to assess guilt. Solving these simulations gives me a brief feeling of triumph, 
always followed by disappointment that the fruits of my labor are limited to a fictional game. I plan to pursue this passion so that one day I won't be catching lollipop thieves. I'll be saving lives. That was so good! Describe an example of your leadership experience mm. in which you have positively influenced others, <laughs> what? helped resolve disputes, or contributed to group efforts over time. It is difficult for students to take advantage of the opportunities school offers unless they feel comfortable in their environment. While I attended distinguished high school, the atmosphere of our campus is far from perfect. During my early high school years, my school's lack of inclusivity became my greatest concern. From noticing dozens of students eating lunch alone to hearing derogatory insults directed at certain individuals, both in rage and disappointed with this normalization of exclusivity, I desire to influence change. I joined No Place for Hate, a club which seeks to create a hate-free environment through promoting inclusivity and fostering diversity. I was determined to initiate ideas to better my school's social life. The first activity I organized was meaningful to me on a personal level. As a special needs student myself, I understand how similar students felt this estrangement on campus. In coordination with my school's special education department, I discussed an activity idea with faculty members intending to create a sense of belonging for special needs students. We decided on a lunchtime game day where such students could gather to play games while interacting with other students. The reception was remarkable, so much so that the event became a weekly feature of school life. This simple act of showing care helped these students become more comfortable at school. Ultimately, the goal of No Place for Hate is to create peace through belonging. While that goal is yet to be fully accomplished, I am proud of the strides my school has taken towards becoming a more welcoming place. I am not even a little bit enraged or Think about an academic subject that inspires you. Describe how you have furthered this mm. interest inside and or outside of the classroom. What's funny? Like you said, I, mm. I, I was just admiring the class. I could give you one toilet paper roll, aluminum foil, red wires, and a battery. That's all I needed to make a radio. Well, that and my awesome scientist uncle. Every year for my birthday, Uncle Joel, a professor of physics at UCSC, taught me how to build a new science gadget. One year, we made a weather forecaster. Another, we looked at organisms through a microscope that connected to a computer. That year, we built a radio. When I ripped open the box to reveal the radio kit, I excitedly started gathering all the materials. We sat together in the crisp late winter air, trying to flatten the aluminum foil so that we could get good reception. Finally, after several attempts, we heard a soft rhythm come from the concoction of materials sitting on the table in front of us. Pride radiated from my face at the success of building something with my own hands. When my uncle was diagnosed with stage 4 lung cancer a few years later, he made sure to keep teaching, supporting, and pushing me to challenge my mind and look at the scientific side of the world. He would send me math problems on sticky notes and I would solve them and send them back to him. He would call me and ask me what I was learning about in biology or if I'd read the most recent article on the Curiosity rover. Uncle Joel showed me that science was about more than just numbers and formulas. It was about thinking through real world problems and focusing on every detail, even the divots in the aluminum foil. When Uncle Joel died, I thought back to all the times we spent together building in my backyard. He inspired me to take extra science classes in school, take a summer astrophysics course at Stanford, and become passionate about cancer research. I know that he would be proud of me no matter what I do in life, but I want to follow in his footsteps and continue his passion for science and discovery. What would you say is your greatest talent or skill? How have you developed and demonstrated that talent over time? Emigrating from one country to another provides a fascinating array of challenging opportunities. I arrived in the United States from Iran when I was but seven months old, and that pivotal event propelled me into developing a crucial skill, multilingualism. From speaking Farsi at home, using English with my friends, and learning Spanish throughout the years of language courses, I have been able to break through the barriers that different languages create. Multilingualism has enabled me to form relationships with larger groups of people and broaden mutual perspectives. For years, transitioning from Farsi to English to Spanish seemed simple to me. I viewed my ability to speak three languages as unimportant until a unique situation arose in which the true power of words came to light. Last year, on the anniversary of my late grandmother's death, my family and I traveled to downtown San Diego to distribute ice cream, my grandma's favorite dessert, to the homeless and laborers struggling in the hot sun. <clears throat> we did this to honor a commitment my grandmother cherished as she aged. Since this was my first time delivering treats, my mother accompanied me as I respectfully approached a group of Hispanic constructors. Speaking to me in Farsi, my mother explained to me on how to address the group of men and explained to them why we were there. Translating her words, I repeated them in English to the workers. What I had anticipated to be a simple task soon became awkward as the workers thought I was trying to sell them the ice cream. Desperately trying to resolve the issue, my mom spoke rapidly in Farsi while I rattled on in English until I suddenly stopped when I heard one man mumble the Spanish word for ice cream. Confused, my mother and the construction workers stared at each other in silence until, to their surprise, I explained everything in Spanish. Delighted, the men approached us as we handed out ice cream bars and they thanked us repeatedly. Through this rewarding experience, I discovered the importance of serving my community through the power of being trilingual. Beyond what is 
already been shared in your application, what do you believe makes you stand out as a strong candidate for admissions to the University of California? I learned early on that being a Marine's daughter meant not growing roots. By the time I was seven years old, I had already lived in four states and gone to three elementary schools. Change was just a part of life. Sure, I had to leave all my friends behind, but I couldn't be sad. At least this time, the move would all be worth it because I would be living on the beach every day in San Diego. My first day of second grade in California was terrifying. I was going to a public school for the first time in the middle of the year in a new state. All my new classmates stared me down as I introduced myself in my southern accent. The anxiety intensified when the bell rang and the class was released to recess and I was abandoned on the sidelines. I moved again just four years later and the feelings of isolation returned. After that, I knew I wanted to make sure that no one else had to experience the feeling of being an outsider. Throughout high school, I've made it my mission to make myself available and connect students to the group. I joined Link Crew to help freshmen transition into high school. During orientation, we let all the freshmen know they could reach out if they needed to, and about a month later, Hugh, one of my freshmen, sent me a direct message on Instagram asking for help. Helping Hugh is a part of my commitment to making everyone feel welcome. My experience with loneliness and being an outsider has shaped me into a person who empathizes with and is committed to making sure others feel welcome and valued. College represents a new setting with its own challenges. Although I'm nervous, I'm looking forward to bringing my own skills of adaptability and empathy with me. Okay, so as you can see, there's a variety of different kinds of essays you can write, and that's those are ours. This video is a trade right? <laughs> yeah, literally. Uh, four stars. <laughs> If you Comment like this video, make sure subscribe. you get four stars. More essays if this hits 5,000 likes. <laughs> <laughs> Not a cool one to do that. <laughs> and if you like this one, we'll read you our comment app essays. Got, like, Bye, guys. Two. Thanks for watching. Ripped onto my hand, like no, the knowledge either one, either from one. my mind. I'm on the edge of my seat. Oh, it's just a shame. No, he's just trying to get out of the frame. That was afraid. Molly projecting right there. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like a little gremlin. He's over there squatted. <laughs> <laughs> We're all just.